are you going to buy a 5G phone this year? You know, it's funny. You could ask my wife. I'm always a late adopter. I'm still three software versions behind on my smartphone. <laughs> I was the last to get a microwave oven. So I'll be the last to get 5G, right, right, but right. I'm the first to make it. Mike, I'm talking to you now. It's a couple days after the Brooklyn 5G Summit. We were there. You were not there, but you were able to cover it. You were watching some of the service provider keynotes. One of the things that we noticed, you had a lot of Nokia people at this event. It's officially sponsored by NYU, the uh, School of Engineering there. So there's people who are working on wireless in an academic setting. And you have you know, student papers alongside some Nokia demos and some vendor demos. We were at a press conference where we were meeting with some of the top brass of Nokia in the Americas. Tell us a little bit about the context of this event and the announcements that were made there. It's sort of, it, it's an interesting event because like you said, it sort of bridges the, the gap between industry and academia. So that creates some interesting, uh, you know, sort of discussions about, you know, it's not about commercial launches, it's more about what the technology can actually do. And it makes sense that, you know, Nokia was the sponsor. Nokia Bell Labs has a long history of sort of working in academia. In terms of at, uh, service provider keynotes, which is where I spent my time, uh, it, it was a lot of like, you know, here's what's going on in 5G right now. So it was interesting to hear from all the operators that presented, including AT&T and Verizon uh, and Sprint. Um, and they basically were talking about where we are, you know, with 5G right now. You know, one of the things that was cool that we went hands on with was a Rubik's Cube demo. So you had a Rubik's Cube that had no colors on it, but then on the screen, it had the colors and it was giving you instructions in real time using 5G on how to solve the Rubik's Cube. There was a lot of um, millimeter wave things, you know, on the show floor, there was a very small area, but you know, I think there's a lot of people working in that space, kind of getting the most out of that um, so from here, you know, looking out for the rest of the year, this seems like uh, kind of a midpoint. You know, we're getting regular status updates. What's the next notch in our calendar? What's the next date in our calendar where we are hoping to get a, an update uh, on where the service providers will be? Yeah, sure. Uh, and first of all, let's just all agree that the Rubik's Cube is perhaps the best use of 5G so far. Forget <laughs> faster speeds and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, the rest of 2019 should be interesting because we're going to get a lot of, you know, a lot of updates from the service providers about where they are in the 5G rollout. And we still have the the uh, T-Mobile Sprint merger sort of hanging out there, uh, you know, we're waiting to, to find out what happens there. Um, and definitely, you know, as you as you and I well know, the big 5G event is, is the next big item on the calendar. Uh, we've got speakers from pr practically across the industry, from service providers to vendors to everybody else. Uh, the fall will kick back in with uh, Mobile World Congress America's show uh, in Los Angeles. So that's sort of the next, that's the next uh, big calendar item, I think. Thanks so much for the check-in, and we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good.